how many metrics should the SaaS business owner check to worry less and sleep better? If you don't measure enough, you'll have no idea if you're doing well or not. If you track multiple metrics, you'll have an all-round view of your business but risk being stuck with analyzing instead of taking action. To clear up the confusion, I'm going to share with you an optimal set of key SaaS metrics. Hi, I'm Ilya, the founder of Alakin Product Design Agency for SaaS. In this video, I'll show you nine crucial SaaS metrics to focus on for scanning your business health. These nine metrics cover all business characteristics from revenue generation to customer satisfaction. So let's get started. The first two metrics go together, because the ratio between them helps determine if customer makes you more money than it costs you to acquire. I'm talking about customer lifetime value (LTV) and customer acquisition cost (CAC). These two metrics are a starter pack for a SaaS entrepreneur. They help to test the viability of your business model. LTV is probably the most important metric for subscription businesses. SaaS companies are trying hard to prolong a customer lifetime with their products. Customer lifetime value shows the total revenue the customer brought to your business during their subscription period. Customer acquisition costs explicitly tell you how much money you spend on sales and marketing activities to bring new customers. To ensure your business will continuously generate profit, your LTV should be much greater than CAC. In one of my previous videos, I explained how to work with LTV and CAC in detail. Make sure to check it out if you haven't already. The next metric that is vital for SaaS is monthly recurring revenue. MRR is so important because of recurring nature of SaaS monetization. Stable MRR makes it easier to forecast your company's growth and plan expenses on sales and marketing. The MRR formula looks pretty simple. You need to multiply the total user's number by average revenue per user. Also, it is essential to know what to include and exclude from the MRR calculations. Includes all recurring payments, customer grades, downgrades, and any additional charges for extra services, discounts and special offers you provide them with a particular month, lost MRR from the customers who's left the product, not include, long-term contracts that paid once at the subscription time, one-time charges like setup fees or advice service. Non-converted trials that can be considered as projected revenue. Now, let's talk about average revenue per user (ARPU). This metric indicates how much money you receive from one user. To get your ARPU, divide total revenue by the number of customers you have. Why is this metric important? It brings light to beneficial high-paying customer groups and those who don't contribute much to monthly revenue. Next up, we've got churn rate. Customer churn rate shows the percentage of your customers who's left your product within a defined period. As for SaaS churn benchmark, marks, around 5-7% to annual churn rate is considered as a norm for large mature companies. If you're in an early stage startup or a company that works with SMBs mainly, your average churn will be close to 5-7% to monthly. It may not seem a big problem to lose 5% of customers during the months. However, considering that this figure compounds over time, the monthly 5% churn will lead to a huge revenue loss in terms of a year. Let me illustrate it with the example provided by Price Intelligently. Let's say a company's revenue increased by $100 per months, but each new cohort experiences 5% churn. In the first month, a cohort brings $100 in MRR. However, due to the 5% churn, in the second month, the same cohort only contributes $95 in MRR. After a year of acquiring new customers, the company's MRR should be $1,200, but it's only about $900, resulting in a one-quarter loss of revenue. Now for the contrast, look at the pretty utopian graph that shows a 5% negative churn. It means that instead of losing 5% of revenue each month, you're in increased by expanding customers. As a result, you'll see the increase in revenue going from 1200 to 1600 and continuing to grow. Churn is inevitable. Regardless of business specifics, size and development stage, there would always be customers who would leave your company. But since even minor churn erodes the foundation of your growth, it's always worth working to reduce the number of lost customers. However, before you can start working on a metric, you need to start measuring it. To calculate the average SaaS churn rate, divide the number of churn customers by the total number of users. Speaking of SaaS, can fail to mention trial conversion rate. The trial conversion rate points out how many users of those who tried service for free actually converted. If the rate is low, this is a sign of something going wrong with either your onboarding or your product itself. To determine your conversion rate, define the number of conversions by the total number of users. Here's what you can do to increase your conversions rate. Facilitate onboarding. Your ultimate goal is to ensure it's no-brainer for customers to start using your product. Survey 
your newcomers. Fresh users are a valuable source of information. It would be a good idea to ask lately joined customers what they liked and what they didn't like in your onboarding. Find your power. When talking to customers, determine what thrills them the most about your product and use these killer differentiators to nudge the list to convert. Let's move to our next metric, freemium conversions rate. SaaS industry experts have various opinions on whether the freemium model is an effective business growth strategy or not. One thing is clear, freemium is more likely a marketing acquisition strategy than revenue model. If you are using a freemium model, you need to measure the freemium conversion rate to find out how this acquisition strategy works in your case. In other words, how many of your free users become paying customers? To calculate your conversion rate, divide the number of paying users by the number of freemium users. The next metric I want to mention is expansion revenue. Expansion revenue is something you get when your customers are great to a higher tier plans. I suggest you to work on improving this figure because it's less costly to upgrade existing customers than acquire new ones. In fact, it's about four times more expensive to gain new customers considering that none of all leads will reach your sales funnel bottom. Due to high expansion revenue, your churn rate may even go negative. Net negative churn means you cover revenue loss from churn customers by upsells. To calculate expansion revenue, define revenue from upsell by total revenue you had from the same period. And the only qualitative metric on the list is net promoter score, NPS. NPS is a survey to measure your customer satisfaction level. It may be pretty helpful for early stage startups to define if a product they're offering meets the market demand. With only one question in a survey, you will have an idea whether your customers are happy with the product. To calculate your NPS, ask your customers how likely they are to recommend your product to others on a scale from 0 to 10. Those customers who place their answers on a scale between 0 and 6 should be contacted directly by a sales rep or account managers who clarify the dissatisfaction. Thoughtful immediate actions may help win customers back. That's all for now. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel. We have more good stuff. And let me know in the comments if we want a detailed video on how to work with any metrics we've learned about today.